Okay, for all you YouTube folks out there, I looked and I've looked at the GM 3.6 VVT V6 engine. I've looked to see how you can determine if you have bent valves before you disassemble the timing chain. The reason I did that was I had no experience with them at all. I'm an old school mechanic, worked on cars and trucks since I was about 14 years old, anything that had an engine. My son's 16 years old and I wanted to buy him a car. In this car, we found the girl was told it had jumped time. She drove it to a gas station one night, got out, go pay for it, come back, car wouldn't crank. She had mechanics look at it. They said it cost X amount of dollars to fix it. It was more than she could afford to fix it, so she sold it. I bought it. Scared that it might have bent valves. If it had bent valves, that's going to be a problem that goes really deep. I'd just soon put a new engine in it. So I proceeded with looking at videos to determine how I could tell if it had bent valves prior to putting a timing chain on it. Really couldn't find anything that determined that positively. So, and I know there's probably some ways to do it and there's mechanics out there that's looking at me going, man, you're a goofball. Well, I might be, but for a, a layman, a guy that don't know, I'm going to tell you. This thing's got two stages of timing. When I pulled the valve covers off, I still couldn't determine. I looked in the intake. They were cruddy valves. I couldn't tell if they were bent and totally closed or not just by looking down in there. It's deep in there. Motor had a lot of uh, buildup in it. So I went on and took the timing chain cover off. Looking at the timing chains, it was evident that the motor had jumped time. The tensioners were to the end of their extension and the chains were loose. Cam phasers, they're a little war. This one here, a little bit loose. This one, a little loose. This one, a little bit loose. This one's good and tight. So I ordered four cam phasers, full time and chain, water pump, oil pump. Everything that I figured I could change at this time while I had the motor apart. But I still wanted to determine before I put it together if I got any bent valves. So I made a tool. It's simple. It'd probably be better to have a gauge on it, but I had a little regulator. I used it as a valve. I took an old spark plug that I had, knocked out all the in. All right, so back to the tool. Spark plug gutted threaded MPT quarter inch. If you have a piece of pipe about six, seven inches long, you won't need the coupling in here, but in, not coupling, but union. I put this in here, thread it into a quarter inch valve. You can use any kind of valve. It'd be best if you had a gauge on here, but I didn't have one. But you can, this is a valve that, it's a regulator. I got a hundred and something pounds of air on it, probably 110 pounds of air at least. And I screw this in, screw it into the valve, plug on each cylinder. And I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna show you. You'll slowly pressurize it up, just like that. If your valves are leaking, you'll hear the air come back up through your, come back up through your intake or leak through your exhaust. These cams are in uh, stage two. They're ready to be reassembled. So all the valves are in a position where you can rotate the motor without worrying about bending anything. All the valves are closed right now and the cams are sitting there in free form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this thing in and show y'all how I test it. We'll do this one right here. First thing I do is I made sure where the pistons was. I stuck something down in there. This one's down, down. This piston is down, okay? 
Let me get this in here. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. All right, it's still got, see, it's up. This thing came up as I rotated the crank. All right, so I know I'm up a little bit. You can have it all the way at the top, but it's gotta be up. It can't be all the way down when you do this test. It's gotta be up some. You screw this in. Screw it all the way in until it's snug. I know this is crude, but it works. I'm fixing to prove that those valves intake and exhaust are not leaking. Okay, I got it snug. I've backed off of my valve. Shouldn't be nothing going in there. Okay, you don't hear no air. Show this wrench, Belinda. I got a wrench on my crankshaft. The reason for that is I have this thing set where it's ready to put back together with new timing chains and stuff. But just for my own information, I put a wrench on it because it's gonna move that crankshaft when it pushes that piston down with air. So now I start at applying air. You can hear the air. See the crankshaft move? Y'all seen the wrench come up? I just proved that those valves are holding and it shoved that piston down. I'm gonna do it one more time for you. I just bled the air off. I'm gonna pull it back up. Now, I'm gonna apply air again. Show them up here. I'm applying air. Look at there. Those valves, if they were leaking, that piston would not go down because all I put was a very little bit of air in that cylinder. So by it pushing that piston down, that tells me that both valves, all four valves, two intake, two exhaust valves, are closed, tight. I did that on each cylinder. You can literally do that before you take the timing chain off, but the problem is you may do some more damage if because your cams are not released in stage two position with no chains. If the chains were on it and you do that, you may drive it up into a, into a valve. So the best thing to do is take it all the way apart, but this will ensure when I put that timing chain on there, I don't have no valve problems. That's all I wanted to show y'all. There's a million videos out there on how to get to where I'm at at this point. This video is simply to ensure you do not have bent valves and you can feel good and safe putting this thing back together and cranking it. This motor will run. When I crank it, I'll let her video that. Thank y'all.